Check out what I got. And guess what we're going to fly it on. That's right. So my plan is to take the new DJI Osmo Pocket right here. It's a pretty cool little gimbal. Um, it lets you, I mean, have like a little Mavic gimbal, but so that's actually in follow me mode. Um, yeah, there we go. Check that out. It's just a little tiny. Oop, it likes to freak out a little bit. So we'll see how it reacts uh, while it's on the quad. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I've always wanted a small Mavic like gimbal that you could just strap onto a quad like this. Uh, it weighs about the same as like a Hero 7, I think, uh, especially with a 3D printed mount. Um, this, I'm just gonna straight up, I got some on my grip, and it's just, boom, done. Um, so let's do that. There you go. So we're going to be trying it in FPV mode. I mean, it makes sense. We are FPV flying, so might as well run the Osmo in FPV mode. I think all that means is it's kind of like a follow me. Um, you actually set the angle like that with your finger. But as you can see, like as I tilt, it kind of just smooths out all my movements. Um, not as much on the pitch axis. Yeah, let's see what happens. It's gonna be really hard to land and take off though, so I'm gonna have to figure that one out. There we go. It's all mounted up. Um, I guess let's see what happens. new spot um, I did a little testing out in the open field did not turn out the way I wanted it to unfortunately uh, I looked at the footage and it's kind of blurry and I think the problem is it's all the little vibrations in the drone are causing the sensor to jiggle or like the whole gimbal to jiggle I don't know what it is but it, it looks like this kind of side to side motion blur, which I'd assume is just vibrations in the drone. Um, I'm gonna try a second time at a different location just cause uh, I put a little bit more padding on where the drone goes to try and isolate it a little bit. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll have to go home and try and make some kind of isolated mount. Um, but otherwise, I mean, this gimbal is really cool. Like, it works very well for its purpose, which is, you know, a little handheld gimbal. Um, but it wasn't really designed for what I'm trying to do, so we'll see how it works out. But, you know, it has this really cool tracking thing where you can double tap and 
Let's see if I can make it work on. So I have it tracking the camera right now. So you can see it's kind of, it's like a, it's like Mona Lisa. It's always looking at you. So I'm thinking um, maybe I can like double tap, make it track on the top of the mountain. That'd be kind of cool, right? And then you strafe around the mountain and it do this cool parallax effect. Let's see if it actually works that way. Um, I have no idea. But, I mean, I guess, can I even track the top of the mountain? Let's find out. So there you go. It's tracking the top of the mountain. That's pretty rad. All right, before we take off, um, I want to give a rundown of what in the world I'm doing. Um, I've strapped it onto my racing drone here. So... The goal is to have, you know, gimbalized flight, but with the abilities uh, and acrobatic movements of a racing drone. Um, it probably won't work because it's not designed for this at all, but it'd be really cool if this would allow to open up maybe some more, you know, smooth cinematic kind of footage or uh, follow cam kind of stuff. It would be really great for, you know, a car chase or a mountain bike chase Maybe it would just smooth out all the movements um, It'd be pretty much like a Mavic that flies like a mini quad. So The other problem is you can't control it in the air. Um, so it's kind of like set it and cross fingers hope that it works uh, I've low-tech just strapped it on there um, It's even got this cool little screen but let's see what happens, huh? Unfortunately, that was really, really, really quick because it's raining now, Washington and stuff. Um, yeah, I have no idea how this turned out. Uh, it's mostly an experiment, an ongoing experiment. So remember, don't take, uh, or at least take everything from this video with a grain of salt because, you know, this is just like super rushed. I just strapped it on there with a the, with the battery strap. Um, with a little more time, I bet. I could get some pretty good footage out of this. Uh, it's just going to take some practice, understanding the camera, understanding the quirks of the camera, um, and you know, best practices and all that. So, I'll uh, I'll keep pumping out maybe these Osmo Pocket videos because I've been waiting for a very long time for a small, lightweight GoPro weighted sized uh, gimbal just like this. So, it's coming. It's coming. It's going to happen. Alright, I got a second experiment. Um, I want to try flying through the forest. Uh, and it pretty much just probably look like just a Mavic flying through the forest. But I'll have the control of my racing drones. Um, I don't know, hopefully I don't crash and break my new toy. Well, that wasn't very smart of me. I uh, I was so excited, I forgot to put my Crossfire antenna on my transmitter, so I fail-safed, like, right a couple of feet away. Um, thankfully, my little 
Pocket Osmo did survive. It got a pretty good nick right there, pretty good nick right there. Um, I guess the gimbal is made of metal, so that's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, I'll check if it works when I get home. Uh, so far it seems all right, but now it's raining harder, so testing for the day is over, unfortunately. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was informational. Infor I hope this was good information. Um, I think Pocket Osmo might actually work on racing drones uh, with a bit more tweaking uh, and some practice. So 